being from Tucson, Arizona, it was always a, you know, a challenge growing up. In my life, I've had a great life under the circumstances. You know, I had a great family, great parents. Uh, you know, they surrounded me around the things of God. I grew up in a great church, but my life wasn't always what people perceived. They think everything must be going good. That wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, when I was about four or five years old, uh, you know, my father was incarcerated for the first time. Being the oldest out of four kids, it's kind of hard to understand why your father was in prison for such a long time. Uh, he got out when I was around six or seven, and I was about nine years old, and I was misbehaving at home one time, and uh, my mom tells me, you know, just wait till your dad gets home. So I remember I was just waiting for my dad, waiting for my dad to get home. And I hear a knock on the door. You know, we open the door and it's the Tucson Police Department. They had arrested my father. And, you know, at the time I didn't really know the, the, the circumstances or anything like that. I just knew that he was under arrest and, and it had taken a big part out of my life because for years and years and years up until I was about 15 or 16, I didn't know why my father was there. I didn't know the, the circumstance. I just knew that he was not home. And my heart grew very, very bitter because I saw my mother and I saw her working two, three jobs to support four kids, you know, us having to move to Atlanta, Georgia, just to be out of, you know, the, those really hard circumstances. Sometimes there wasn't food on the table for us. When I came back, you know, I started going to middle school and there's a lot of people that don't know this, but I got bullied a lot in school. Uh, you know, I was never the biggest, baddest dude on the yard. You know, there was a fear to go to school every day because you'd run into certain people, you'd be burnt in certain situations where you, you'd have to fight and you'd have to, you know, you'd have to constantly defend yourself. And I was never really a fighter uh, up until I was about 17 or 18. And I remember telling my uncle that I was, uh, I was getting bullied in school and he took me to my first boxing class. And ever since then, I fell in love with it. But something that was in my heart, I always was bitter towards my father. I hated him. It was, um, I, it was, it was very, very hard to understand why my father wasn't there. You know, all throughout high school, my relationship with Christ wasn't at its peak. And I got to a point where I was so angry with my father that I had to go to the gym every day just to get through the day. And I knew that that wasn't going to be a good, uh, you know, a good avenue for, for me to go down. I came to a point where I had to surrender my entire life to God. I had to let go of all the bitterness and all my hurt towards my towards my father for everything that, that had happened. When I went to go see him, everything was good, but when I went home and went back to real life, my life was, there was, there was so much turmoil and so much torment in my life due to bitterness and anger that I had to learn how to let it go. And when I let that go, life didn't automatically change just like that. But it did definitely get better. Uh, God completely transformed my life and transformed my relationship with my father to this day. You know, uh, he's a huge part of my testimony. I love him to death. He's a born again Christian himself. Uh, has a great Bible study going on in the, in the prison system. The way that God has completely turned this around is, uh, is an absolute miracle. Uh, life hasn't been the easiest since. It's, uh, it's still a struggle, but it is worth every single second. This year uh, has been a very, very difficult year for me. In July, um, my best friend uh, passed away. And there came a point in time where, you know, he had been a training partner of mine for, for years and years and years. And when he passed away, I became very bitter and I, I, was, I was so angry at God and I was so angry at the situation that, that had just occurred. And I said, God, if you want to take my best friend, that's fine. I'll see you later. And when I was walking out towards the church, I didn't, I, I never intended to come back. I never intended to, to, uh, to come back to church ever again. Pastor Fred Ruby, he stopped me and he, uh, he pulled me aside and he said, uh, God's not one to take things away without replacing. Uh, he's going to bring peace and he's going to bring comfort in this time. And God's done nothing but that. Uh, there was a time where I wanted to quit boxing, when I wanted to not chase my dream of becoming a world champion one day. And through 
the people at the Door Christian Fellowship, my family, my coaches, you know, my friends, um, if, if it wasn't for you guys and if it wasn't for you guys putting your your full investment into my life, I would not be here today. So you know who you are. Thank you all so much for everything you guys do. But at the end of the day, if it wasn't for Jesus dying on the cross for me and and sending his son to allow me to forgive, I would not be sitting here and I would not be blessed enough to chase the dream that I have. You know, I've, I've said it time and time again that I'm, I'm nothing special, but you know, my journey is, is special. This is something that that you know that Hollywood can't write. This is something that God's planned from the get-go, from before I took my first breath. So, you know, if you're out there and you have that bitterness in your heart, and you have, and you don't have the ability to forgive, and you don't have, and you don't have the ability to let go, just know that God let go of His Son for you to forgive. Like I said, it's every, it's worth every single second. I just want to say thank you.